sorry I'm running a few minutes late. My, my, I'm just always, you know, first thing in the morning with the computer. This is always my first meeting and it's never happy. Um, I'm going to restart it real quick, but what we do, should we do a go around? Are we waiting for anyone else? I don't, I saw Helen. Oh, Ben Helen's here. Um, yeah, but of go around of, um, uh, how you're doing and any, any info to share. Well, I'll start just by reminding us all that the poli the, um, Police okay. Review Committee draft report is accessible on online and in paper copies in a few places. Uh, Kellogg Hubbard Library, um, the City Hall, Town Clerk, and another way. And we're inviting um, comments from the public. There's a form for that. There's always a form for that, right? <laughs> um, and it's also uh, on, on available online and at paper paper versions at the same places. And comments are through the 18th of this month. Um, the committee will meet again late in the month and the plan is to issue the final version or present the final version to the city council on uh, October 8th. Is that the right date, Lauren? Yeah, yeah whatever meeting is that week, that sounds. Right, so, so, um, it's your chance. I mean, we, we talked uh, last time about um, responding as a committee and we and ruled that out, but I encourage you all to, the rest of you who are not on the, on the committee already to, um, to take the opportunity to make comments. And just real quick, I think we decided that we were not going to write comments as a committee, but that um, I think Jeremy and I volunteered for to, to write comments as individuals. And anyone else wants to, that seems great. Does that all sound right? Is that the decision yeah. that we made? Well, the form itself is is a, is, a, is an open ended form. It it doesn't it's it's not um, you know how do you you know do you like this yes no maybe it's really just inviting comments, not. No, and we'll see what happens. I can go next. Uh, morning, everyone. I just started teaching last week, uh, and I that's why I need to leave the meeting around 9 10. I hope it's okay for everyone until next semester. I will be teaching Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 10 to 2 p.m. So I will be attending our meetings briefly uh, next semester, which is I think we finish end of them at the end of the November. I will move to Tuesday and uh, Thursdays for my teaching. So I will be attending our meetings like a full <laughs> full time. And in addition to teaching, um, I will see our um, diversity, equity, inclusion vice president today. And I want to mention our work. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we can do something together, but I am really looking forward to uh, learning from her. She's very experienced and it is for the first time for our college too. Uh, we have DEI person and it will be a, I think very nice journey for all of us. And that's all from me. So nice to see you all. Uh, I can check in. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, feels like it's been a while. I guess it's a, a long summer, but a short summer. <laughs> I'm going to keep, I'm gonna keep swimming in the river until I can't any longer. I was out there this weekend. Um, I'm okay. Um, yeah. You know, just trying to take the fall in stride and all the ridiculousness that swirls around our world. Um, so it's early and I need more coffee. <laughs> That'll do it for tonight, today. <laughs> Thanks. I, I can check in. You okay, Cameron? Freaking cough. Um, 
Yeah, I'm doing fine too. We've just been in the mostly like back to school mode around our house, which was interrupted with a, a quick quarantine last week of one of them already, but um, it's going to be an interesting school year. <laughs> so it's like somehow we have a much more transmissible strain and much more lax rules around all of it. So very predictably not going great. So <laughs> we'll see. Um, so anyway, all that going on. And then I am excited as part of today's conversation. We've got our strategic planning today at city council which Cameron runs awesomely <laughs> so um so anyway just want to make sure that that's part of our conversation of anything that we would want to make sure for um have I would love to bring forward whatever um you know this committee would like me to obviously I've already got the like extending our equity work um contract but if there's anything else would love to hear from you all. I think that was going to be my sort of check-in to um, Cameron Niedermeyer, uh, staff support for this committee. And um, uh, we do have our strategic planning beginning tonight. So it's our workshop. So what we're doing is we're asking council to sort of think of their big picture goals um, for the next year. Um, they have nine goals that they've identified over the years just checking in to make sure that those still feel right. And then after that, we get through that process, we're gonna ask them to sort of come up with the, the strategies to accomplish that so that we can then fit our work that we're already doing towards those strategies and goals and any new projects that they want to, to bring forward. So that's really gonna help us come budget time. Um, we've moved this normally in the past. Strategic planning was done in the spring here but that doesn't really help our budget process, which starts in the fall. So um, we're really trying to align their priorities with our budget uh, creation. So I'm really excited about how this year is gonna go, but um, an, uh, an equitable um, uh, community is one of the goals. I'm saying it wrong because it is also, I agree with Jeremy very early and I need coffee, mm -hmm. um, but you know, this, like Lauren said, she's going to bring forward the, like this work, the, our, our equity report. And I think that that's really important and is on my list for sure um, as an initiative to bring forward to council to prioritize. So this is only day one of like a pretty long process. Honestly, what is going to happen is council is going to say their goals and their strategies. And then we're going to come back as staff and sort of present to them a plan that gets us to those as much as we can. Right. And then there'll be time for public discussion and feedback. So I'd love to bring that to y'all, um, at least the parts that have to do with equity and inclusion um, for feedback and um, assistance, honestly. So I'd love to put that on the next, this next meeting agenda for y'all um, to talk about a little bit if that would be helpful for y'all or, cause I know it would be helpful for me as staff to hear from y'all and get feedback about it. Cool, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I feel like I, we just had a meeting and yet we had the presentation back to city council and I'm, and it's been like three weeks since and I'm just like, how the heck are, mm -hmm. is it end of summer already? So I, I feel all those things. Um, and I'm wondering if before we get into the rest of our agenda, which is just looking at the report back from other city committees, um, creative discourse presentation and proactive educational and events and, and, and budget items for that proactive work and then other business setting next meeting agenda. Uh, I mean, that's all the stuff. I'm wondering before going into that, if we can just um, kind of address balancing and if we want to schedule a new time, like we, we scheduled this 8.30 to 10 time because I think it was like, Overall, this is a time that works for this crew, and we recognize it's not a very equitable time anyway. And so, if we wanted to like find a time that works for everyone overall, um, I feel like this is sometimes easier to do in person than on um, doodle polls by email. Um, but does any does that sound okay to do that right now on the agenda? Mm -hmm. um, and so, looking kind of two weeks out, where's my calendar here? 
just like, think, you know, typically like every two weeks, but obviously that can be discussed too. Like, so like the week of the 20th, um, does anyone wanna like propose a time that will like typically work for them? Yeah, I wanna tell something. My schedule will change after um, December. So if you are okay, me attending like 40 minutes, 50 minutes to our meetings until then, oh, okay. it's okay with me. So we don't have to play with the time, but it's up to you. You know, uh, I'm okay. I can read the meeting notes. I'm okay yeah. attending less <laughs> than uh, I'm supposed to, but I just want to check with the rules if it works with the comedy or if it is okay with the you know, city rules and everything. Okay, okay, so I will be available after November this time anyway, so. Okay. So we don't and have then maybe to- do we just, I feel like we've been having shorter meetings anyway, just because there's mm -hmm. been like less like tangible steps and stuff. Do we wanna just do like plan on doing an hour too? Does that make sense? Like plan for an hour meeting, 8.30 to 9.30? Just awkward. Yeah. yeah then I okay. can attend yeah because it takes half an hour to drive from Norwich right. okay yeah thanks unless anyone does want to propose a time please cool. you can always change those things yeah I know because I'm like December that's so far away but it's like you know only a handful of meetings yes so okay so we're talking about meeting the 22nd, is that as planned, is that right? That's what I heard from 8.30 to 9.30. Okay. <coughs> yeah, and then it would be like October 6th, is that? Yeah, October 6th is my birthday, so. Yay! <laughs> I will be 44. <laughs> Happy very early birthday. Of course, yeah. Well, my, birthday, <laughs> my, my birthday's on the third and I'll be 77. So <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Two seven. Okay. Putting I will put on my you calendar on my real quick. <laughs> you said the third, Michael? Yes. But... I'm writing all these down, you see. I know, like noted. Um, okay. Um and the, yeah, any other like report backs from city committees? Is this the time to talk more about the strategic plan, like where things stand now um, and what the steps are there um, or anything else from the police review committee or any other city committees? I, was just, I just wanted to share, I forgot to mention, um, we appointed a new city councilor last week. Oh yeah. Um, so, I can try to put in the chat, but um, I have her letter up. So it's a um, woman named Jennifer Morton. She's um, a 50 year old Anishinaabe woman. She's a social worker, sun dancer. She, part of her application was um, uh, applying, wanting to bring uh, better representation for the BIPOC community and needs of her community. Um, into city government. Um, she served as a commissioner on the Vermont State Commission on Native American Affairs, um, and she works on like homelessness and other things. So she's got a really interesting background and resume. So she'll be starting tonight with us. So um, anyway. I, what, repeat her name, please. Uh, Jennifer Morton. Okay. I can put, if I can, I was trying to get her just letter in case anyone's interested <coughs> it's not really working but yeah so exciting um Anything else on strategic planning? Mm, so I'm not sure. Um, uh, I think I'll know a lot more and we'll be able to fill you in a lot more at our next meeting um, to tell you 
sort of what council discussed. Uh, it's gonna be a really, hopefully a cool workshop. Um, I finalized my presentation yesterday and it's 76 slides. So I'm so <laughs> sorry, Lauren, <laughs> so sorry. But um, really uh, a lot of what it, the bulk of it is really te helping teach our new um, council member what this plan is, how, it, how we implement it, what we do to track it. Um, uh, so I, I, I'm not sure um, where we yeah. are now. Um, I feel very confident about, um, I presented uh, the year end of the 2021, 20, or the, yeah, I guess it was 2020, 2021 strategic plan. And y'all's, you, the, the goals that I set out for myself to support y'all and to get the equity assessment done for the city was accomplished. And I feel really good about that. So that's a thing that we can like put a feather in our cap. We did step one. Now it's time to do more work. What does that mean? Right. So that's really the strategic initiative that I'll be putting forward for DEI. Right. And for better or for worse, and I'm sort of the staff champion for that. So um, that's my responsibility. But I think that really hope drives home how important this is to us is that we were putting this in the city manager's office and it's our job to get it done um, and to can you continue that work. So, um, you know, I've been taking trainings outside of work on DEI initiatives and I'm really hoping to, to get a lot to bring back to Montpelier. So um, that's exciting. The strategic planning workshop will be really good. Um, if you guys are interested in watching it, Orca will be streaming it. Uh, I have no idea how long tonight's going to go, <laughs> but it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, anything on the police review committee too, Michael? Say that again? <clears throat> anything else of the police review committee? Yeah, I know the report came out last week. And yeah. So like, um, the, as I said, the, there are a bunch of recommendations. Um, they are summarized at the beginning of the report and then given in more, more detail at, at this uh, last section of the report. Um, so that's, um, you know, that's where the meat, of, the meat of it is. The rest of it is showing what, how we did it and who we are and things like that. Um, but the, but the recommendations are, I've forgotten how many we, we made, but, um, that's where we stand. And we recognize that there are more things to be done. And so that's um, that all, I guess that's one of the last things also is what, what the city council is going to do. Is it going to create a new committee, which is one of the recommendations um, or can try to can make this one a standing committee? This, uh, the com the, this committee was supposed to, to be finished at, at the end of June, but, uh, but at any rate, I think by October, we'll think that that's, we've done our work and we are ready to dissolve, depending upon what the city council decides to do. Just one other thing like that this group might find interesting in the report, um, there's a pretty lengthy section on the public outreach that was done. So obviously we had done, you know, worked with creative discourse on some pieces of it, but um, also had done outreach um, to like sex workers and uh, groups that work with like victims of domestic violence and like a bunch of people that, you know, when part of our charge of like, how are we getting voices that are often not part of city government processes? Like there was a pretty robust and like, I think unique from any process I've been a part of, I guess, uh, kind of, outreach and um, talking to a bunch of people. So it might just be interesting to look through that, like, and just the, I mean, it was a very wide variety of perspectives that were brought into that. Um, and, you know, everything from people who are like, I've had like an excellent experience working with the Montpelier Police Department to like any police interactions, just period. I have, a, I've, you know, problems with. So it was like the entire gamut of perspectives, even from people, you know, people and groups of people, I wouldn't have necessarily anticipated the, the feedback. So it was pretty interesting to, to see. So 
Could check out to that section of the report as well. Great. And dovetails nicely to our next and like the big chunk of our meeting today. So um, after our last meeting, we had the presentation from Keisha and Tabitha and Sue, like a really, I thought like long in-depth presentation to city council, really going through their recommendations and answering questions and just like hearing thoughts and feelings and feedback and reactions. And, um, and so I guess of us like starting out wanting to think about like that, yeah, if anyone else wants to share kind of reactions about what that process was like. And then I think coming out of that, of you know having some of this like proactive work um, uh, as as the committee of you know wanting to um, say how are we going to continue kind of doing this engagement and education and outreach and gathering feedback and um, for for some of these you know key issue areas that kind of keep coming up. And then as a secondary piece of like going into like budgeting stuff, like what what are those proactive priority pieces of work and how do we want to. Um, start thinking about how we want to prioritize those for moving forward. Um, so yeah, so I guess for like starting out, I'm just like, yeah, what were folks' reactions from this uh, meeting three weeks ago? I'm sorry, there's a lot of trash trucks and things. I can jump like, in if, yeah, I was like, <laughs> I don't know who I am as a city councilor. <laughs> what did you think? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think overall, like I was like generally glad to see council was really interested, engaged, like it was clear that they understood that the commitment to this work is long-term and ongoing and it wasn't like, great, let's check a box that we did this like assessment and we can move move on to other things. So I thought that was all good. Um, you know, I think part of the conversation acknowledged like this is hard, uncomfortable work and like, yes, it is and it needs to be or we're not doing it right. Um, so I think that was kind of acknowledged. Um, I mean, I think a lot of it was like, you know, like I, someone like described it as like, okay, we've gotten like the diagnosis and like, now we need to figure out <laughs> like a, of like a bunch of problems. And like, it was maybe, maybe less clear the like, where do we go from here? Even though obviously the, there's a bunch of steps that they identified. Um, but I think, I think overall there was like, you know, wanting to do the work that was like identified and like build on it from there. And so those are, those are my overall impressions from what I was hearing from the other counselors. I mean, I thought they did a great job presenting and mm -hmm. Dana, you did a great job like um, helping cue it up and just be a constant presence there for it. Um, but. It was a long day. There was like a lot of presentation. I mean, like, yeah, I think you guys would get a lot of those anyway, but it was um, long presentation on top of several long presentations and thinking, yeah, folks were still staying really engaged and um, yeah, committed it was good. Um, yeah, and I just think it was just like really, um, just really, I feel, I feel like it really landed and like was really like deeply felt by not just, you know, city councilors, but staff and um, of just like really getting to, to sit and soak in the, the information. So, and I can just put that presentation in the chat. I'm realizing I didn't put that out with the agenda either. Oop, or maybe I can't. Sorry. And I think I copied Shana on this, but not everyone else. Maybe, I don't remember. Um, but I did update your website on the oh, city's, yeah. like your webpage on the city's website that has the sort of history of your work with creative discourse and then the discourse, like creative discourses presentations and equity report for us. So it's easy to direct people to that now. That's what I can link in. Cameron, was there much reaction from staff? 
Mm, I would say no, because they've been pretty, other than this makes sense, this is what we've been talking about, because we have been having ongoing conversation about this. This wasn't like something in the background that they're just like, oh, here, we're receiving this information. We really have been uh, bringing this up, at least in our leadership team, um, pretty regularly um, throughout this process, checking in. And I think staff appreciated being engaged. Um, so we've got, I think, I think the work for us is really pushing that down um, instead of it just being like leadership and management is into a, sort of our further workforce. But that's um, going to take some um, thought um, on how to, to really bring that home for a lot of folks. But otherwise, no, no negative reactions. I think people were very invested in this process, sort of knew where it was going to end up. Um, you know, I think we're, we're not big, we're like 117 people. So people, the, this is very, it strikes home for a lot of us, right? We see it, we understand it. It's important to have different perspectives. So it's not hard to communicate these kind of things through 117 people. So no, not surprised, but definitely understanding and starting to strap in for a long haul. It's a lot of work. I think um, I'm, I'm remembering the meeting slowly. It was so long. <laughs> and I, I was feeling like so, I think, much appreciation for Lauren, you all, and city staff. Man, and just what a commitment that is. So thank you to you. Cameron and Lauren um, and others. Um, but I think, you know, that I'm thinking a lot about housing because of the other things that were being discussed in that city council meeting. Um, and that is one of the recommendations that came out of uh, the creative discourse report. Um, just that kind of fundamental issue of housing inequity in Montpelier and hearing about it in more detail earlier in the night and then you know, thinking about it through the lens of the creative discourse work um, and then connecting that thread to um, I think we had someone from the maybe it was the, the zoning committee or the design review board in our big committee meeting um, kind of reaching out for some help thinking about um, you know zoning issues and how, and then there was a comment that uh, Sarah made from the state around, you know, housing feels like it's so much out of our control because it's such a complex, wicked problem. Um, but she made a comment about, well, actually where local governments do have a lot of control is in zoning, right? And like those kinds of building codes and ordinances. Um, and so I'm, I'm connecting those dots and wondering you know, it sounds like we may have some part, willing partners in the kind of building design review space and wondering where there's some opportunity there to work on this housing inequity issue. Um, I hadn't thought about it that way before. And then, so that, that was something that struck me as an interesting opportunity. I can certainly, oh, Michael, sorry. Can I can say one thing. Um, when my wife was on the city council, I, I think when she was on or maybe shortly after she left, there was a committee to uh, um, review barriers to uh, housing, uh, um, affordable housing in the city. Um, I don't know whatever happened to that report. I know it was, again, well received, but, but um, if uh, and, and I can look through Nancy's papers to see if I can find the date, but Cameron, you may, you, you may ask Bill, he might remember the year at any rate. And I think it's worth revisiting that that document so that at least um, the you know what they knew at that time, which is not that long ago, um, has not changed considerably. Maybe gotten a little bit more difficult with this crazy wild um, uh, uh, rise in prices uh, for houses being sold here. Mm -hmm. um, but. Um, uh, at least look at that as a, as a kind of starting point would be, I think, helpful for the committee, not having to reinvent the wheel in, 
they get yeah. you know as it were yeah, lauren just found it michael she posted it <laughs> oh good there's also um the housing committee um mm -hmm. I, I would love to, if you want, we can sort of bring the chair or at least a member from that and our planning committee mm -hmm. to talk to y'all about that. If we want, like, maybe if our next agenda or y'all's next, sorry, sorry, if your next agenda is strategic planning and then maybe give enough time for the next meeting could be about housing and just hearing what they're doing and like where y'all can plug in would maybe be helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or maybe even the next one before the strategic planning one, because that, that process is going to be like over a month, right? We're not going to be too late on the game. Okay. Because I feel like that could help inform that discussion. Yeah. And then, because also coming out of our committee of committee meetings, um, that we kind of connecting with Montpelier Lives process and with the planning process. And I've reached out a couple of times and haven't heard back. And I, of course, have not reached out in the three weeks since our last meeting. So I am going, I just wrote it down to circle back with them. So apologies for not making that happen. Well, I'll get someone to come to your next meetings. We'll make it about housing. That'd be amazing. Because they did just present to council, the housing task force, not committee, I'm sorry, about sort of the state of housing mm -hmm. um, in Montpelier. And it was really uh, illuminating. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we talk a lot about affordable housing and their report is, yes, we need more affordable housing, but we also need housing for like working class folks, which is what's like really needed in town. Yeah. Um, so it was, just, it was really interesting and things um, that were important, I think, for the community to hear as well. So I'll share that and I'll invite them to come to y'all's next meeting. Oh, thanks, Helen. Have a good couple of weeks, yeah. Um, uh, and so with that then, too, of um, wanting to, um, just with this on the forefront of mind, wanting to do the committee of committees every so often. And if we wanna do that before kind of the holidays hit, you know, before November, we should probably start making a plan for that sooner rather than later and like putting the word out there and things like that too. Do folks still, do, does that make sense to do that this fall or to wait till early spring, you know, till, till winter, winter? Well, I guess my, my only question is, um, what kind of expectations are we setting for that gathering? Um, did we, did we meaningfully act on what came out of the first one that would motivate people to come together again? Um, and so I know it was great for like starting something and building relationships, new connections. Um, I guess maybe we want to get really clear on what the goals of that would be as a regular gathering. Um, rather than have it be a little bit ad hoc and kind of unstructured. Yeah. So that's just my point. I almost wonder yeah. about like, you know, obviously we'll have the, you know, taking the, the recommendations and next steps with the creative discourse and the equity assessment. And then, I mean, I think maybe parallel to that, or maybe this is part I can't remember all of the recommendations there if this would like be responding to any of them, but like thinking about if we understand as a group, like what are the um, strategic priorities? So like affordable housing and, um, you know, looking through those and making some decisions of like, okay, let's try to like reach out to some of the key committees that are working on that and look for places where we think we might be able to bring a different perspective to that conversation. I would probably front load anything that feels like there's budget implications, just knowing the timeline of the budget. So if there's anything that we'd wanna be getting, thinking into how those budget recommendations are gonna be coming forward, um, could be one way to think about it. Um, I mean, I almost wonder if we do like that work, like with a couple of committees and then next spring come back, like invite the full group. And then we could talk about the work we'd been doing with committees and like look for other opportunities. So we have something more to kind of like report 
like report back on and like show what <laughs> what collaboration can look like. I mean, obviously it'll be probably, to, you know, depend on who the people are in those and how it goes. So I'm sure we'd have some lessons learned of like things that did or didn't work uh, in trying to do that. But I don't know, that's just one idea. I like that idea, Lauren. And I think it's a good yeah. way to focus and kind of stage um, how we start to address the recommendations with others. Um, so I, I would support that totally. That sounds great. And so then for the things with the kind of the budget implications, there's kind of the two major recommendations coming out of the presentation were about, um, you know, stipends for committee participation um, or, you know, for residents serving on, on boards and commissions. Um, and so this is something that I know has been done in Essex and I've just, you know, had some like very initial conversations, but of just trying to figure out like, what does that, I, and I think that's, you know, it's first year there and stuff too. And so like, if there's other folks to talk to, to like learn what's worked and what hasn't worked and best practices and all of that, um, to, you know, start, um, building the support for, for doing something like that, um, here, um, and have it be successful. And then the other piece is being for um, the initial outreach to LEP households um, to develop a language access plan and just even recognizing like, oh, we have a lot of learning. I like, this is, I feel like where we like started doing work um, for our outreach and it was like, we don't even know where to start. So, <laughs> so but like, um, of, you know, reaching out to other communities um, of what that's looked like in other cities and also of looking at like, who are the people who are doing this work in Montpelier right now? <laughs> Let's like um, let's 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 be a little bit more proactive on on this as well. Um, but it looks like various people are gonna respond to that. But go ahead, yeah. I was going to say that the people who are doing the the learning English that's the um, uh, the Vermont uh, Central Vermont Adult um, Adult Education is, is that or, um, <clears throat> They're based in Barry, but they have a, yeah. an office in the pavilion uh, in the Capitol Plaza, and they've been doing that for years, um, with with various immigrant groups that have come and, and passed either pass through or, or become part of the community. So we could we should, could certainly, if that's an issue we want to talk about, can bring them into into the conversation. Central Vermont Adult Basic Education. That's the name of the the, the group. So I think I was kind of coming into this meeting thinking we would do more separate calls with, or like, you know, like, you know, Michael would have a meeting with the Central Vermont, you know, education and like learn about like what's needed for doing LEP outreach and developing a language access plan. And Jeremy would talk to the folks about the stipends and ask them what's happened in Essex or like things like that. And after hearing about for housing, I'm just like, let's have the housing people come to us does maybe that make more sense of doing more of like a for, for full committee participation rather than yeah if I'm just thinking about this now sorry how how to how to how to implement this <laughs> well I like the idea of uh, sort of portioning it out so that there's a there's yeah. some, but there's somebody who is you know looking at this and and we could obviously call on each other but that the, um, that does sort of focus one each of, each of our attention on one place one or two places at the same and you know not get too large an agenda because I think we need to do this you know take our time with it but get on to it get on with it yeah and as I was saying I was like I and housing is different than both of these two, right? And because it's so many different committees and things, rather than like, it's a little, it's significantly more narrow of like who's impacted and who's engaged in that process already with language access and with compensation. So, or stipends, I should say. Um, so yeah, okay. So for housing, we'll still have them come next week. And then, um, yeah, maybe I'll set up a call for folks deal who have dealt with this and asked there any other like ideas of how to you know do some more learning and digging around stipends for boards and commissions um 
Yeah, I really just want to know, like, I'll do some benchmarking as well. Like what, what, what is the, what are people paying? Right. Yeah. I mean, that's really what exactly. to me. I mean, I hate to be very like utilitarian about it, but that's kind of what it comes down to to me is like, what is the budget impact going to be? How do we support that and make that sustainable? Right. Yep. I'd be curious to like, I worked on this a lot for the, um, Vermont Climate Council, we were trying to figure out how to get stipends for people and there's so there's a there's a standard state stipend for serving on some commissions. Um, and then we were trying to get like an, an additional one so that people I forget what it is it's like. Maybe $50 a meeting that you can get once I don't know it was um anyway we, we had done a whole bunch of research so I'll try to see if I can like dig anything out it, but then it was like just flagging it was basically like having to budget for as if everyone's going to take it but then in reality it's been almost nobody has opted to take it so like figuring out that budgeting like you need to set aside money um in case everybody wanted it and mm -hmm. and you know, opted to take it, but then the reality is, I think in general, and I'd be curious with Essex, what their experience has been mm -hmm. with that. I mean, you want it to be actually making it more accessible. So people like, you don't want it to set it up in a way that like, nobody's taking advantage of it. So it means like nobody right. is serving who like actually it's helping them be able to serve. But, um, but on the other hand, it doesn't mean all of a sudden every single person who's volunteering is going to mm -hmm. request it or um, take it. So. I don't know, figuring out that line for which makes the budgeting trickier, Cameron. <laughs> I can ask them about that too. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, we'll start there and can do just like a kind of a brief report back next meeting. And then um, if there's more questions, as more questions come up, can keep circling back. Um, and then yeah, for L the LEP and language access plan, um, does anyone know folks at Central Vermont Adult Education? And yeah, Michael, like, would you be up for for doing some of that, like, outreach and, yeah. and hearing more about what's going on? Right. I used to be on their board, and I was also yeah. a volunteer, I was also a volunteer there for a while, and um, I've had people that I've tutored in the interim, so mm -hmm. I, I I know who's who's out there anyway. Mm -hmm. Michael, you're involved in literally everything. It's so amazing. Oh, there's a long list of things I'm not involved with. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, no roller derby, but everything else. Um, but uh, are there other like types of asking, like um, like other, you know, comparable communities that we should be talking to about language access plans? Or I'm not sure. Well, yeah, I other. Mean, seems like Burlington is a. Yeah. It's the one that comes to mind because we have so many yeah. immigrant communities. Um, I think it's is it St. Mike's or or I think it's St. Mike's that has a a um, a program for um, teaching people how to teach English mm -hmm. uh, as a second as a as a as a as a second language or whatever it's called now, I'm the, I'm the, the, the terminology has changed a lot. Um, and they, they, that might be a good place to go um, because I think the people who are being trained to do that are going there to get, to, to get the credentials and then working yeah. out in the field. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's, um, it's not Champlain College, but, um, but St. Mike's, but, um, and, and um, I can I can inquire when I talk to the people at CVABE about who where where that training is happening because mm -hmm. they would be good people to bring into the conversation about how you go about doing this um, and mm -hmm. and and who's doing it. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Do you need any more support for that kind of initial step, Michael? Or no, I'll have the conversation with the CVABE folks, see what I can yeah. get from that. And then if there is some need for addition, I'll put out the word 
they or or send up a flag help but um but uh, but it, just the first conversation to get you know what what's going on locally and what they know will, will be fine great anything else on those pieces of like housing uh lep um committee stipends um I mean, the only the thing that's jumping out to me um, is creative discourse's third bullet, just about accessibility, which I think touches on physical accessibility, but also communication, materials and strategy for communication. Um, but there's a lot, there's a lot in that bullet. Um, and I'm, I guess I'm wondering more about like accessible information about city government, about services, which also connects to the LEP stuff, of course. Um, but just generally, how do, how do we make sure people know what's happening in their community? So that's one that's interesting to me. Yeah, Michael. Well, there it might be helpful to bring uh, folks who are involved with the, the CAN into this um, because, mm -hmm. I mean, um, it's hard for me to judge how this works because I think you have to have an interest in, in government to, you know, yeah. to start looking around and trying to get information. But if you're trying to, to sort of put it in everybody's face, that's another, that's another level of communication where you make it so that you can't avoid it mm -hmm. um, and you know to say well we put we put advertisements in the newspaper or put advertisements in um, uh, um, on uh, the city website well not everybody reads a newspaper um, as the newspaper people will tell you um, and not everybody um, has access to or interest in in wandering over to the city web page. So I think it's, I think it would be good to talk with, um, you know, the, the CAN folks who are doing sort of more boots on the ground kind of stuff in their, in their immediate area about how to, how to, how to expand the communication system. Yeah, I think, I think that's an important piece of the puzzle. Maybe it's the last mile piece in a lot of ways. Um, there is something to explore too, though, in terms of strategy um, and even new tools that the city could explore for kind of the, kind of the first transmission, right? Or in many modes of transmission that then, you know, someone like an organization like CAN can kind of make sure it gets into the, the cracks, right? Um, I guess I'm using a lot of mixed metaphors, but. Um, so yes to can, and I think, you know, there are perhaps other ways that the city can be thinking about making itself more accessible. I wonder too about, um, you know, I mean, not, not every issue is equally interesting to <laughs> every person or kind of different stakeholders or however you want to put it. I mean, I'm thinking of like, for example, like a couple years ago, these were in-person meetings, so it must've been ages ago, but like when we were first really starting to focus as a council on homelessness, there were people who were like going and talking with people who were like living on house in our community and like bringing them into the council meetings. Like, like we wanna hear your perspective and like, like actively saying like, okay, we're having a conversation like about issues. And like, and I would say for, you know, we've generally had better participation of people living unhoused and like hearing directly from people who are currently experiencing homelessness or did recently than we do on a lot of other issues. And like, there was a very deliberate like outreach effort in that case that the city staff and it was even like a couple of police officers had taken the initiative to do that outreach originally. And then it, I think, grew from there. Um, but just thinking like, you know, and obviously it's 
extra work and maybe maybe not every single issue and my new show that comes before council is like the same but things that are like you know if we're having a big discussion about something that yeah. impacts people in our community like what have we done like deliberately to in a way like that of like how you know our perspectives being like invited in because there's like there's so many like nonprofits and groups that it could be like not just putting it out to front porch forum in the newspaper but like oh like does anybody know like a group that might have like a network that we could just send this email to make sure it's like on their radar and that they're being personally invited like we'd love to hear perspectives so again like I know that that would take more upfront staff work <laughs> and with limited staff capacity but you know, starting to think through that of like when we're having discussions, who's who's also been kind of invited and feels like welcomed and like their perspectives are valued and we want them and to be part of the discussion as policies are being made that will impact them. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, like the there's kind of specific when like a you know task force gets developed about something that gets ha that happens right but like the housing task force i think there's this new you know public restroom task force like there's like other like key specific issues where because there's like a smaller group of folks just like working on this one thing like we can like they can like dive in but i'm just being i think what i'm hearing is just like being more intentional on outreach uh, as stuff comes up before city city council and are you, are you thinking that would yeah that would be specific to staff doing that outreach it's or us or all all of the above it's on everyone yeah that's really <laughs> yeah I mean it seems like ideally it would become part of like practice like oh there's an issue coming before city council or there's some big like policy discussion we're having like who's been invited we would probably like the checklist of are there, you know, I, I think like building those networks and getting to know, like I would imagine city staff could be helped by like just the network of brains and contacts of like beyond just having to think of it themselves. <laughs> um, but like, I, you know, it's, it's like the same issues come up a lot. So it seems like once you kind of build that database or, or like network, then it would become easier and easier to be like, oh yeah, like let's make sure we're sending this out to whatever groups or. Well, I'll, I'll say that one way to get a good list of that is to look at the in, the organizations that get uh, grants from the city every year. Um, the, 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 what is the Montpelier, the Montpelier Community Fund has a, a, has a page, um, a, a web page, but also a page in the annual report of um, all the organizations that receive city, you know, taxpayer funds. And that's a start, a good starting point because they, they covers a very wide spectrum of, of social needs in the, in the community. And they're already, those organizations are already aware of what, you know, what issues are, are happening on their front. And we, we, we don't have to, to, to do a lot of the legwork ourselves but really just go to those go to those folks and say, you know, how do you want to be represented here in conversations going forward? That's certainly something that I can start asking staff to do just on a sort of preliminary level now. When you look at our agenda documents on our council agendas, if you go to like the packet, you'll mm -hmm. see a cover sheet for each of our topics, right? It sort of explains, hopefully, in a very easy to understand way, what we're talking about, what we want council to do, and generally what our recommendation is, and, you know, give council the background information, right? At the bottom of it, it says interested parties, and I don't think we're using that to its full potential. A lot of the times, it could be like the homeless community, if we're talking about the encampment policy, but I don't think we use it to its full advantage, and that's certainly something that we can highlight as staff immediately is like an immediate impact of, hey, this has been a recommendation. We do need to fill this out more and maybe use it as a way to say, here's what extra communication we did other than putting this in Front Porch Forum and Facebook to, to engage the community that we think this might could impact. So that's an immediate takeaway for me from this right now. So thank you. And I'll sort of report back on how that's going. 
I think we also have to be mindful of the, what, the, what um, the creative discourse people emphasized. There's a, there's a level of exhaustion that sets in among a f- you know a few organizations or uh, as, as some, per- and there are just so many meetings that they can go to before they just throw up their hands and say, "I can't do any more." Mm-hmm. Um, so we have to be really careful. I think on. I think the the outreach important obviously is very obviously an area of need, uh, and and the instit- the organizations that are there are the obvious ways of connecting. But we have to be careful about, you know, the the how much time and energy do they have for 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 more, adding more to their to their agendas. Yeah. I don't know, yeah, a matter of whimsy, we could try to make it a, a deal with Amazon. Every package that you deliver has a, a little post-it note to yeah. sort of <laughs> say, here's what's going on in your community. Well, I think- you... We probably get more people there that way than we get on Front Porch Forum or- yeah. <laughs> the One website. thing, Michael, one thing you said, um, what you just said actually is reminding me of a um, kind of a work-related issue for me. Um, So I do a lot of qualitative research um, and I'm connected to a community of other folks who do qualitative research in large organizations. And the thing that's on everybody's mind over the last couple of years is creating a research repository because you don't want to have to keep going back again and again and again to either your customers or your constituents or whatever um, when you do these kind of in-depth qualitative research programs. And so the research repository is a way to collect like insights and findings that are gathered from those kinds of research activities and create really a knowledge base that can then be accessed when you need it. It can be updated. Um, It's a massive undertaking. I'm not necessarily making the recommendation that the city of Montpelier should create a research repository, but I wonder if there's a way to start to collect whatever kinds of information we have. I mean, it's, Lauren, you, you mentioned a database, a network database too. Like, can we start to put stuff that we're learning somewhere where people can find it again when they need to? Um, because we, we are, we keep like, your, your point, Michael, is really well taken. We keep, okay, we're having this meeting about the housing crisis. Okay, let's, let's go back out there. Let's find out again what people need when, maybe we've already asked that and we have it tracked somewhere um, that we wouldn't have to do that kind of intensive outreach every single time. Well, uh, I can report on what the the police review committee did, which was to set up, and uh, and I guess the person who was doing it ended up being Mary, but it started with an intern from Norwich. as each of us were given a, a topic to work on, we sent resources that we used, the links to the resources to that person who then posted it on, an, on a spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. And it kept growing and growing it, but it was also divided into, um, it, it got topic names so you could slip it, you knew where to put it. Uh, and uh, I know Mary Smith was taking care of it towards the end, but. Um, but we did have a, an intern from Norwich who was doing it initially. Uh, and that is there perpetually. So anyone mm-hmm. who wants to know about, for example, use of force in, in police, there was a, bibli- a growing bibliography there. Uh, and you didn't have to do the, you didn't have to do the research all over again. You could go to, you could go to that as a starting point. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what it would take to start something like that at the, at the uh, much higher level um, because you're talking about now not just a limited number of topics but also limitless with mm-hmm. city council but mm-hmm. maybe that's a conversation to have about who does what with with this kind of information mm-hmm. that's interesting thought I feel like this is like one of those like intellectual conversations that I just like don't really have very often anymore. <laughs> I'm just like, like 
<laughs> of like theory <laughs> and strategy and thank you guys no i'm sorry i'm not very helpful Well, I will say from my own re research on the topics that I had to do that there's a, an enormous amount of information and it's a kind of bottomless if you, once you get started because then you see the references that the people are quoting when they write their reports and stuff like that. And, and some winnowing at, the low, at, at one level is, is helpful. You know, here's something important to look at rather than here's another article that deals with housing. Um, uh, and... And then having some measure of control over or self-control over what you post there is is important in order to make it useful. So, okay, so just of recapping what our next steps are here. Um, so we're not going to organize a committee on committees until we like have strong goals and plans and what that's going to be. We're going to have housing come and talk to us next time and, you know, dig more into like what's needed, what's happening around affordable and like working class housing around LEP outreach. Um, and Michael's really going to kind of be point on doing some of the outreach there for compensation for committee participation. I'm gonna do some outreach there um, and we'll both kind of report back at the next meeting with the housing um, piece if we can. And then um, for accessibility, it's, I don't know, I'm trying to like, do we have specific next steps here or is it, you know, continuing to be more intentional about the interested parties form? Is it, um, about uh, work, you know, communicating with with Can on on a strategy for communications. Yeah, what's so the city? I just for talking about Can real quick. The city does use Can often, um, but there are some things that they are just busy or not super. You know, it's maybe not the right avenue for spreading that information. Um, but we are trying to figure out uh, the best way to use the money that council has appropriated for them. Uh, well, maybe for them, right? Um, yeah. The mayor wanted to put out an RFP process. So we're figuring out that RFP with the mayor. So that relationship may or may not change. There might, may or may not be can and or a can in a different setup than it is now. So there's just more conversation on our end about that. Um, but we do use them as a communication link, especially with a lot of our DPW stuff, like neighborhood specific information mm -hmm. is really going through them. Um, but I'll keep you abreast on sort of the changes there as they come up. Mm -hmm. Any other next steps? Quite a lot of them, Shana. I was going to say this. Yeah, I know. It's like, a lot. Okay. But I'm like, I've been like taking notes and I'm like, but they're kind of all over the place. So I'm like, did I just miss something? Okay. So our next meeting is going to be September 22nd, 8.30 to 9.30, right? Um, just try to have it be an hour. Um, and uh, we'll mostly hear from uh, housing and do some, do some, and, and do some, report back there and then the meeting on October 6th will be more on strategic planning we'll kind of have some more numbers and and um specifics there does that sound good mm -hmm. cool I don't like what other tasks can we give ourselves for the next two weeks and it's like nope Did we we've got it did we have minutes, Michael, for August 18th and September 1st? Um, I thought that I had, not, they, was there a meeting September 1st? Isn't that the well, one that we Yeah, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put something together for that because y'all did have a meeting warned. Um, 
And I think that was just a miscommunication from my office because somebody else sat in on your meeting before. And I, they, anyway, it does not matter. Point is I um, warned it. So I have to put uh, some to put something together. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'll do that. But did we just didn't go through that part of the agenda. Michael, did you right. send out and August I, 18th? No, I have, I, I, they got, I had them, I have the notes here, my notes here. And I thought that I had drafted it and sent it around. But when I looked to find it in my files, I didn't. So I apologize once again um, for not getting the minutes done. But they're here and I'll try to do both of these. Um, maybe sit down with it today so that there's not another big lapse in time. Anyone who would like to take this over, I'm uh, I'm willing to, you know, <laughs> to, to hand it off. But um, no one goes. <laughs> yeah, Thank I, you I don't... so much, Michael. Actually, Cameron, uh, getting notes from Cameron and from, and from you, Shana, help because you know I can barely sometimes read my own scribbling. So, um, um, and anything you want to send me is is helpful. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Cool. All right. Well, thank you all. Yeah. And happy new year, Shana. Thank you. Yeah. Head over to synagogue now. So, all right. Bye everyone. Thanks everyone. Yeah. See you soon. Bye.